Question for you, Lord. Uh, thank you that you would uh, allow us to do this, Lord. And I pray this brings you glory. I pray that you would, uh, your name would be lifted high today. I pray that um, the, whether people are new here or someone's walking by or even just in the car wondering what us crazy Christians are doing out here, <laughs> I, I pray, Lord, your name would be lifted and people would to know you are the true king. You are the ruler. You are sitting on your throne ruling and you have all authority um, here on this earth and in heaven, Lord. And I pray that would be known today. Lord, I pray for our worship this morning. Pray first, you just uh, help us lay any, anything aside that we are holding in, um, any sin, any any past thing this past week where um, it's been maybe, maybe it's been a rough week, Lord. I pray that, that we will find encouragement and hope today. I pray this worship is pleasing to you and it brings a smile to your face, Lord, and it will glorify you. Um, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You're not plugged in, John. Check your connection. Judging our defense. 
I believe in the saints' communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection. My name is Craig. Um, as Dan was, uh, John was talking about earlier, uh, we are reading, we're going to be in Daniel 9 uh, today, uh, which is uh, Daniel's prayer over his city, Jerusalem. Uh, I'm going to be reading uh, Daniel 9, starting in chapter, or verse 3. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession and said, O Lord, great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who loved him and with those who keep his commandments. We have sinned and committed iniquity. We have done wickedly and rebelled even by departing. Sorry, departing departing your precepts and your judgments neither have we heeded your servants prophets who spoke in your name to our kings and our princes to our fathers and all the people of the land O Lord righteousness belongs to you but to us shame of face has it, has it this day to the men of Judah to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel those near and those far off in other countries to which you have driven them because of the unfaithfulness which they have committed against you. O Lord, to us belong shame of face, to our kings, our princes, our fathers, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants and prophets. Yes, all Israel has tra transgressed your law and has departed so as not to obey your voice. Therefore the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us, because we have sinned against him. And he has confirmed his words, which he spoke against us and against our judges who judged us by bringing upon us great disaster. For under the whole heaven, such has never been done as what has been done to Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come upon us. Yet we have not made our prayer before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquities and understand your truth. Therefore the Lord has kept the disaster in mind and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, which he does, though we have not obeyed his voice. And now, O Lord our God, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and made yourself a name as it is in this day, we have sinned. We have done wickedly. O oh Lord, according to all your righteousness, I pray, let your anger and your fury be turned away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain. Because, of, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people are a reproach to those around us. Will's going to pray for him. Our God, thank you for bringing us here today. And I just thank you for this community and this country that we have where we have freedom to gather, freedom to make choices, Lord. 
we've used the freedom that you've granted to us to to flee from your law, to flee from what you've set forth for us, Lord. We've we've lost sight of bringing you glory, and instead chased our own. As a community and as a country, we have. We have looked at marriage as it's something ter- temporary. We have forgot, forgotten the sanctity of life, Lord. We have forgotten. We have forgotten the persecution that your your people have experienced. The persecution that happens when a country or when a people departs from you, Lord. And I fear that we're starting to see a return to that. I fear that we're becoming so distant from your word, from your law, from the goodness that you have for us, and that we become so consumed with with ourselves, with our desires, for our our desire for comfort, for our desire for money, for power, for for control over our own lives, Lord, that we have we have waded into an area that is dangerous and that we do not have control of, Lord. Things have not gotten as bad as they can, nowhere near. And I pray that you would draw this community, draw your church, draw this country back to you, Lord, that we would willingly come before you, that we would willingly give ourselves to you, give our country to you, to, to avoid the calamity that, that faces us otherwise, Lord. Just this past week, we've seen, seen the consequences of, of what a country is when it departs from you. And I fear that it is something that will continue and Nothing is going to change that except you, Lord. There's no laws, no legislation, no security, nothing that's going to change this country's heart other than you, Lord. I pray that by whatever means is needed, that you would draw us all as from our individual, to from our family, to our community, to the entire country. Just do whatever is necessary to bring us back into communion with you and to save this country, Lord, so that we can bring glory to you again. In your name, amen.
Daniel continued his prayer. O oh Lord, according to your righteous acts, let your anger and your wrath turn away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy hill. Because of our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people have become a byword among all who are around us. Now, therefore, O oh our God, listen to the prayer of your servant, to his pleas for mercy. And for your own sake, O oh Lord, make your face to shine upon your sanctuary, which is desolate. O oh my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolations and the city that's called by your name. But we do not present our pleas before you because of our righteousness, but because of your great mercy. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, pay attention and act. Delay not for your own sake, O oh my God, because your city and your people are called by your name. Let's pray. Lord Father, we just we lift up water, though, Lord. We lift up this community. We lift up. We ask that you hear. We ask that you hear these prayers, the prayers of your people, Lord, for this community. We just ask that you forgive, that you forgive us for our sins, all of us, that you forgive this community for their sins, and not because we deserve it, but because you are righteous and you are holy and you forgive. We ask that you pay attention, Lord, that you see that we want this community to stand for you. We want this community to be a light in the darkness, that we want to see Jesus throughout the streets, throughout everywhere. We want to see a revival here, Lord. We ask that you act. We ask that we see you move through here. We feel you move through. Just fill us with the Spirit, Lord. Just like Daniel prayed, Lord. Just forgive us because you are righteous. We don't deserve it, Lord. This community doesn't deserve it. None of us do, Lord. We just ask that through your righteousness that you forgive us. And do not delay, Lord. In these times in this world that is surrounded by sin that moves farther and farther away from you every day, Lord. We need it. The children need it. This community needs it, Lord. We need you. The love that only your spirit fills our hearts with, Lord. Fill this community with that love. Fill this community with your spirit, with with all of you. Help us to bring the lightness to the to the dark, Lord. Help us to to reach the lost, to spread your word. Open their hearts, Lord. We pray for your people, Lord. We pray for Christians. We pray that you just give us the strength, that you give us the strength to keep going forward and bring the light to your people, Lord. And again, we pray for revival in this community. We pray for Waterville. We pray for our surrounding areas, Lord, that we can see the darkness be pushed out and only the light that you shine in the dark, Lord. We pray this in your name, Jesus' name. I think it's uh, it's amazing. Uh, we're gonna next song we're gonna sing is the Lion and the Lamb. You know, this 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 God that we sing to. Um, it's amazing that he's both equal parts lion, fierce and magnificent, and someone who's awe inspiring. Uh, and should be revered, and also someone who is um, was a lamb. It was the spotless lamb that was that was slain for us, lowly us. You know, it's just it's amazing, and that's what this song is about. He's equal parts lion and lamb. He came, he lived a perfect life. He died on the cross for our sins, and he will come again. Amen. Amen. Winslow to hear us. Woo! Woo! I mean, they're just over there. It's not that far. He's coming on the clouds. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow. And every chain will break. And every chain will break. As broken lies declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty?
Daddy comes to save. Daddy comes to save. song. The song is called The Stand. And this is, this song for me is the epitome of everything we can do to show our community what it is to surrender your life to Christ. To stand before Him, to give all to Him, to the Creator of the universe. The one that knows your name has numbered the hairs on your head and knew you before you were in the womb. And that is what we're here to do today, is to stand and proclaim his name before our community, before the whole world, that Christ is here and he desires a relationship with you. Let's sing this together.
times we feel close. Lord, I ask that you would meet with us today. We thank you that your spirit is here, filling this place. Lord, we pray for our community, that we would be a light on a hill, that it would shine for all. Lord, that is what this is all about. Lord, we bring the good news of Jesus Christ out of our walls into a people and a country that so desperately need to know you. Lord, we pray for the message today that you would speak to us. Lord, you know our hearts and you know our minds. You know our motives. You know everything before it even happens. But Lord, search us right now. Help us to lay all these things down that are separating us from you. So that we may enjoy the fullness of in our relationship with you. The true joy that only comes from Christ. And knowing where your eternity lies. Lord, we thank you for these things. We pray you would humble us convict us and show us your grace and mercy we pray these things in jesus name amen good morning everybody but i introduced i think i introduced myself early i'm john Avery, lead pastor and if you, if you are new, you just came and you're, uh, this thing's going to fall over on me. This one's there. I'm just saying. All right. So uh, if you didn't come earlier, if you just, just showed up, uh, once again, if you are new, make sure you grab a coffee mug over there uh, at the welcome tent. And I also encourage you to grab a Bible now um, as we dive into the sermon this morning. Um, and if you don't have a Bible at all, uh, please take that Bible home with you as our gift to you. We love giving out Bibles. We just bought a whole stack more, so um, please take a Bible if you need one. Um, it's quick, quickly got a couple of quick announcements so we know. Uh, obviously, this is the first of four park services. For park services we will do this summer. Uh, we're going to be doing them uh, right here every single time, and we have uh, invites back there. The next one will be July fourth weekend, July third. Uh, then we have one in August, and we'll end with uh, one on Labor Day weekend. So uh, just mark it on your calendar, and uh, make sure you don't come to the church for those. Um, next Saturday, we've been nat- well, we're partnering with National Trails Day, Family Fun Day. Uh, they're doing a bunch of stuff, and um, some fire you know, the fire department showing up. They got uh, we're. We're bringing the food carts. We're giving out burgers and dogs and other things. But they have a whole bunch of stuff for the family. So if you uh, are looking for something fun to do, free for the family, make sure you come out to that. Um, and, and we have a food cart schedule as well. We have those back there. So if you are wondering where we're going to be for our food cart, we usually do them um, at least once a month. So we kind of do this one, and we have a food cart that will land um, in the middle of the month normally. So um, so as we just did, we prayed over our community, and the reason why is as a church body, we are in Daniel uh, chapter 9, and we, as a church, you might see our tagline, we are a family that makes disciples, and we mean that. We want, we want to be a church family that gets out and does this, uh, that, that understands that Jesus told us to go and make disciples. That means we need to go. Um, I know it, if you're a Christian, you understand we call this the Great Commission. Jesus told us to go and make the disciples of all nations, baptizing the Father, Son, and the, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And 
I've always said some people, I think many Christians think it's the great come mission, right? Come to us, come to the church. And, um, but Jesus told us to go and to go out. Go, go do this, I believe. We need to do this. Churches, more churches need to do this. Be out in the public and proclaim the greatest news in all the world. And this is a picture of what we see um, done in the book of Acts, the beginning of the church. They were out. They were always out. They're all proclaiming the good news. They didn't have church buildings. They would go out in the public and preach the news, and people would come to know Christ through that. And that's why we come out. That's why we do this. Um, so it's, it's, we know it's fun. I love being out. But thank God we have good weather. We don't always have good weather, but God's blessed to save us from good weather. So, um, so I, as, as, as I said earlier, the church body, we've been praying and fasting this week for our community of Waterville. And the prayers you just heard, uh, read and then prayed over, something that many of us have been praying this entire week, praying over Daniel chapter 9, over our community. And we find this prayer in the book of Daniel. And Daniel pleads with God for his people. You might have noticed when I was reading, he was mentioning Jerusalem. He was mentioning um, Israel. And during this time, this city of Jerusalem was in ruins. The place has been devastated. Uh, if you've been coming to our church, you would know we've gone through most of the book of Daniel. But this place is literally desolate. No one lives in this place anymore. As far as you know, if they do live there, they're basically homeless because there's no buildings anymore of any structure at all. Um, and there's two major things, if you didn't notice, that Daniel prays for. And the first thing he prays for is forgiveness of himself and for his community. And the second thing he play, prays for is a re restoration of his city. He prays for God to restore his city, for God to build it back up again. And we are praying for the same thing for Waterville. We want that same thing. <laughs> we want God to forgive our rebellion, to show mercy towards us, to pour out his spirits and transform the city. A city that is plagued with many problems. You have to be blind not to see the problems. We have with addiction, broken homes, poverty, abuse, division. I can make a list probably even longer of things that we see going on, going wrong around us. We'll, we will be very bold to say, though, we do believe the way the city will be transformed, the city will be changed, is not through any government program or any, uh, any laws. It's through the power of Christ. It's through the Holy Spirit. And, and our plea has been this entire week for God to hear us. And I do believe God will answer. I do. Just as he did in Daniel's time, I believe he'll answer again. It won't be in our timing. It'll be in his timing. But at some point in time, he will answer for us. <laughs> kids in the back. All right. So uh, we love kids at Living Water, too. If you are new, we have a lot of kids. And we absolutely love kids. So anyway, um, if you have your Bible, go ahead and turn on me right now to Daniel chapter 9. Um, like I said, if you didn't grab a Bible yet, they're on the welcome table in the back. Make sure you grab one. Um, Daniel is a small book in the Old Testament. If you're not familiar with the Bible, feel free. Use the table of contents. It's a very small book. You can, get, you can run over it. Uh, big numbers of the chapters, small numbers of the verses. And so, uh, open up there. <laughs> Alright, so... Now, there's a reason why Daniel prays this, this prayer. Um, it's probably that he, he prayed this prayer often, but if you haven't noticed when, when we're reading it, there's a certain urgency that Daniel has about this prayer. There's, certain, there's a reason why he's prompted to pray this prayer in this passage. If you have a Bible, go ahead and look at uh, Daniel chapter 9, verse 1, and he kind of tells us why he's starting to pray this. In the first year of Darius, the son of Awashoeris, by the decent Mede, who was, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, perceived in the books the number of years that, according to the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet, must pass before the end of desolation of Jerusalem, namely 70 years. To, to, to gather what's going on here, okay? The Babylonian kingdom that destroyed the city of Jerusalem. Remember, if you say you've been coming to Living Water for a while, if you've been going with us through Daniel, you know this. Babylon destroyed Jerusalem. They de laid it desolate. They killed thousands of people. They tore down the temple. They tore down the wall. This city is literally tore down. I mean, look behind us. Our city is, is still here, still standing. Their city is gone. It's in rubbles. And so what they also did was, when the kingdom took over the town, they, they, they brought many people into exile. They killed thousands, but they also brought thousands with them back to Babylon. Daniel was one of them that he brought back with him. So just think what, what he's going through for a minute. Think what exile is. So if 
what exile would be like if you could just picture this for a moment. Think of a foreign country came into America. Okay, I think it's, I don't want to throw out names, but they say China, Russia, North Korea, some of these bigger powers that maybe we're, we're kind of nervous about, right? Let's say they did actually come over to America and they literally destroyed our capital. They destroyed everything. They killed millions of people. And then the people that were left, they would bring back with them to their home country. So let's just say it was North Korea, right? You ever saw videos of North Korea? I would not want to live in North Korea. But they would bring them back to North Korea and we, we would live there. Now, most of us would long to go back to our home, right? Especially in this foreign country we're living in, they're treating you as the bottom of the barrel, second-class citizens. You're treated basically as dirt there. You would long to be back in your homeland. You would long to go back to this place. Now, follow what just happened for Daniel. This, this has been Daniel for 70 years at this point. He's lived in this foreign place. He's longed to be back in his homeland. And the kingdom that actually brought them there, the Babylonians, has been conquered at this point. You read in verse 1, it's the first year of Darius the Mede, right? The, the, the Medes and the Persians have now conquered the Babylonian kingdom. So now the Babylonian kingdom is now destroyed. So Daniel finds himself very hopeful. Why does he find himself hopeful? Verse 2, it says he's, he's reading a certain book of the Bible. He's reading the book of Jeremiah. And he's calculating the years, it says. So what exactly is he reading in Jeremiah? What exactly is he doing? He's, he's reading this passage. And what, what is it that spurs him to fast and pray, to put on sackcloth? Sackcloth is like burlap. Okay? You, do, you don't want to wear this. It's not something you wear around. Yeah, it's, it's, if you ever, I don't know if anybody ever put on burlap, but they're itchy, right? It's, it's something that it causes you. The reason why they put these on is because it causes you to, to pray, right? When you feel that itchiness and uncomfortability, it's, it's driving you to prayer. And that's why they'd wear bur, uh, uh, sackcloth and ashes. But why is he doing this? Why is he desperately praying for Jerusalem? There's a certain prophecy in the book of Jeremiah actually mentioned twice in, in Jeremiah. They spoke about this 70 years. Jeremiah was a prophet, that meaning that God would speak directly to him to give a message to his people of Jerusalem. Many of these prophecies were warnings about what is to come, but some of these prophecies, prophecies are hopeful messages for the future. And Daniel is definitely reading one of these hopeful messages for the future. I want to read what most likely Daniel was probably reading. Jeremiah 29, verse 10 and 11. Says, for thus says the Lord, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place, meaning I'll bring you back to Jerusalem. Then verse 11, a very popular verse. Many of us have heard this verse before. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me, and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all, you, with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from, a, from all the nations and all the places where I've driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. And as verse 2 says in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, he's calculating the years, namely 70 years. 70 years of the Jews would be in Babylon, in exile. So just think for a moment. But think about what Daniel's going through. He's lived in this foreign country 70 years. He's treated as dirt, treated as second-class citizen. He's longing to go back home. And the one that has treated you horribly for these past 70 years, that's caused you so much misery, they're gone. They've been defeated. And then you remember... You remember the, what the prophet Jeremiah wrote. Daniel was a man that, that studied scripture. He knew scripture very well. So he finds himself thumbing through the book of Jeremiah, and he comes to this prophecy, and he reads, and he says, whoa, wait a minute. 70 years, Babylon is going to be defeated. Babylon has been defeated. He starts, he, imagine if he had a calendar. He goes to his calendar, and he starts to look. He's like, I have been here for almost 70 years. And he knows at the end of 70 years, God is going to restore his homeland. He's going to give fortune again to his people. He has a plan for his people, a plan for hope. And this is what drives him to pray. This is what drives him to get down on his knees and plead to God to have mercy. Think how excited you would be if you were Daniel in this moment. I think the feeling could probably be comparable to, uh, let's say, maybe your favorite movie coming out. 
right? The date's finally come. You finally know it's right there, and it's finally you can go and watch it. Or maybe a kid on Christmas morning, or maybe your wedding day. It's finally, the day is there. You're going to be able to do it. The date you've been looking forward to for years is right at the doorstep. You get excited. But I think this excitement goes a little bit further. I think this is actually probably more comparable to somebody that's been literally in, incarcerated, incarcerated in prison for almost 70 years. Let's say like you've been incarcerated for, se for 70 years, you have a life sentence. You're planning on basically dying inside of your cell. You're planning on constantly just being in this place of misery for the rest of your life, and that's what it's going to be. But you hear just maybe that the judge might let you out early. He might actually restore you. He might actually let you out of this prison. He might actually bring you back to your home. When you have finally reached that 70 year mark. If this was you, you've been incarcerated for 70 years, what would you do? If it was me, I know I'm gonna reach out to the judge. I'm gonna plead with the judge and say, God, would you please have mercy on me? Judge, would you please let me go? I, I would humble myself before this judge. I would acknowledge my failures. I would acknowledge my crime. And I'd say, yes, I did wrong. And would you hear me? And would you act? Would you not turn away from my request? This is what Daniel does. He pleads for mercy and asks forgiveness to the judge, the almighty judge, the judge of everything, God the Father. He asks him, as, as we summed up this verse, Daniel 9, verse 19, just to sum up this entire prayer. He says, O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, pay attention and act. Do not delay for your own sake, O my God, because your city and your people are called by your name. This is what we've been praying for all week. And we've been praying specifically for our community, this exact prayer. That God would hear, that God would forgive, that God would pay attention and act, that he will not delay on this, that he would do it quickly and soon, and for his glory and for his people. In many ways, I think we can relate to Daniel. This is why we've been praying this prayer. This is why when I came to this and I started looking at where we're going to be this day, when we're going to, well, what I would preach on in Daniel. We've been preaching through the entire book of Daniel. When we came to this prayer, I realized God brought us to chapter 9. I said, this is amazing. This is exactly what we need to be praying for our community. When you, when you look around at our city, you, could, you have to be blind, as I said, to see everything that's going on around us. You have to be blind to say there's no problems. And I would ask you, what is it, what is it, what is it the solution? What would restore our city? As I said earlier, I do not believe more government programs would work, more laws, spend more money, or hire more police, and some controversial things. Maybe we'll fire the police, right? We go back and forth because no one really knows. This is why we have such a vision in our country, because we always have these, these ideas, well, the problem is the police, the problem is not the police, or maybe it's more mental health, or maybe ban guns. We could go back and forth on this all the time, but I'm telling you right now, that's not the problem. That's not the problem. I think that some of the, some, I'm not trying to get into political science, some of the things might help, but they're, they're not the solution. They're not the solution. What is the solution for our community, though? What is the solution for our community? Daniel knew. He knew where to turn. He knew the solution. You notice what he does? He does not go to King Darius. He doesn't run to King Darius, say, plead with King Darius, say, Darius, would you have mercy on us? Would you let us leave Babylon and go back to our city? Which is interesting enough. He does, you guys know future in the history, the Medes and the Persians actually fund the entire rebuilding of the wall and the temple and everything. It's actually crazy what God does here. But Daniel does not run to Darius. He doesn't run to the most powerful man in the world at that point. And as we know in Daniel chapter 6, Darius and Daniel were friends. He could have very easily gone to Darius and asked Darius to, to have mercy on them and let them go back to the homeland, but he doesn't. He goes to the one that he knows has full control. He knows he goes to the one that has authority over Darius. He goes to the one that has the, all the power, the true king of the universe. He turns to God. What's the solution to the problems that we see around us? The, the solution to the problem that you find in your life is King Jesus. That is the solution. 
He's the one that will bring things that are dead back to life. He's the one that will restore your life. It's not going to be any person or any government or anybody that has a lot of money. It's none of that. It's going to be King Jesus. I could tell you countless stories of people sitting around, sitting in these chairs right now. That if you saw them a year ago, some even more than that, but just some people I know right now a year ago, their life was in ruins. Some were homeless. Some were addicts. Some marriages were falling apart. Some were in deep depression, suicidal even. And today I look at them, their lives are literally transformed. They're a different person. They're not the same. They're literally not the same. You look at them, you think there's something totally different about you. Their demeanor has changed. They smile. They have peace. They have hope. Because their king, their savior, the one that set them free is Jesus. This is what we've been praying for this entire week, that, that many in the city would find this hope. And maybe someone even here today, they would change, they would find this hope. Now, I would say, the way this city, the way this world, the way our country is going to change is one person at a time. That's the way it changes. It's one person giving their life over to Christ. It's one person being renewed. It's one life being restored. That's the way it happens. I fully believe that God's going to answer our prayer. He answered Daniel's prayer. It's all in his time. Shut up, don't look my eye. But I want to just leave us with this, because this is what is the most amazing about this prayer. If you look at the end of this, uh, in Daniel chapter 20, when Daniel ends, there's a lot here. If you, come, if you want to uh, come back next week, we're going we're to finish Daniel 9 next week, because uh, there's some deep, really amazing prophecy in here we're going to get into next week. But in Daniel 9, verse 20, I want to read this, because I want to see how this all ends. So Daniel gets done praying, and this is what happens. When I was speaking and praying, confessing my sin, and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my plea before the Lord my God, for the holy hill of my God, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, the angel Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at first, came to me in a swift flight at that time of the evening sacrifice. He made me understand, speaking with me and saying, Oh, Daniel, I have now come out to give you insight and understanding. L listen to this in verse 23. At the beginning of your pleas for mercy, a word went out, and I have come to tell you, tell it to you, for you are greatly loved. Therefore, consider the word and understand the vision. What I think is so amazing about this, the angel Gabriel was sent to Daniel. And when was he sent to Daniel? Not the end. Not, not like when he finally finished or maybe years later. He was sent to Daniel at the beginning of his plea. Just think how encouraging this is. When Daniel starts to pray, God is already working. God already knows the prayer. God already knows what Daniel's going to ask for. Before Daniel even gets the whole entire prayer out, God has already sent Gabriel to go and tell him what's going to happen. Next week, like I said, we'll get into what Daniel is going to hear from Angel Gabriel, what is going to happen. I wanted to tell you, to leave you with something. is God is always going to fulfill his promises. He always will. He will always fulfill his promises. The promise that we find in Scripture in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, where Daniel was most likely reading, it came true. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. The promise that Daniel had, and that promise came true for Daniel. They went back to the land of Israel. They had fortune again. They had, God had a plan for them. And ultimately that perfect plan would be seen in Christ. When he would come to Jerusalem, when he would die on a holy on the hill, for our sins, for, the, for our rebellion, and raised from the grave in Jerusalem. But I want to close with one more promise. The promise that leads to new life. The promise we find in the New Testament. The promise that leads to a transformed life that we need, we, we desperately need to see in our community. We need to see revival. It's the only answer. It's Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 1, it says this, and you were dead in your trespasses and sin, and when you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out, carrying out the desires of, our, of the body 
in the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. This right here, not quite a promise. <laughs> we'll get to the promise in just a moment. But this is the state of every single one of us. All of us here. Before Christ, before we get into the good part, before there's a but right after this, you, you, you know this first. Let me just put some questions on you. Do you feel dead at this moment? Everything that you look to that, to bring you happiness in this life, does it just leave you empty? Does it leave you just wanting more? If you're feeling this, I would say it's because you are following a lie. You're following the enemy that has told you these lies. You're following the prince, the power of the air, the one that's at work right now. You've fallen into a trap that, that keeps many of us in bound inside these shackles. And I'm going to say right now, you need to be set free. You need to be set free. But how, you ask? How would you be set free? Here's the promise, verse 4. But... God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he has loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. Stop living your life for the pleasures of this world. It's not going to fulfill you. Stop living, carrying out the, the desires your body wants. It's not going to give you what you need. You're following the course of the world. You are following Satan himself, and it will lead you into a pit. It will lead you into more and more depression. It will lead you into more and more addiction. Whatever, you're, whatever it is that Satan is trying to pull you in, it's going to drag you down even further. You're living a lie. I'd ask you this, haven't you had enough? What else do you need to try? Do you think there's going to be a different outcome if you go try that thing again tonight? Don't fool yourself and do not listen to life because it's not going to change. I love what the angel Gabriel tells Daniel in verse 23. The same thing we find here in Ephesians. For you are greatly loved. <laughs> love that. God loves you. You are greatly loved, every single one of you. This entire community is greatly loved. God loves you. He loves you so much that he sent Jesus into this world. Jesus, the one that the Bible says that all things were made through and all things were made for. Jesus would choose to come to this earth to die by his own creation. He would do this all for a purpose. For you, for me, for us. To die for our sins, to take our penalty for our sins, the sin that has consequence. Don't think your sin does not have consequence. It does. Just any crime does. There is consequences for sin. But yet, but yes, this is God's mercy and God's grace. Jesus paid our debt. He paid for our sins by dying on the cross. But you see, though he died, the most amazing part is the most amazing news. This is the gospel. He had the power to defeat sin. Because he, he was the one that had no sin. And he would raise over the greatest consequence of sin, this, the, great, the, the number one consequence of sin, which is death. He would raise from the grave. Jesus rose from the grave in victory over sin and death. And his desire, as he looks around this world, is that none will perish. That all will be set free. That all will have a new life. And they will find the joy that only comes from him. They will find a peace that surpasses all understanding and they will have hope again. This is his desire. It's what he wants. He wants this for you, all of us. He wants this for Waterville. So I plead with you, turn to Jesus now. Confess your sins to him now. Today is your day of salvation. Don't wait. Don't wait. Why would you wait? You have a God that loves you and he wants you. He wants you to know him. Make him your king today and you will find you will find him. He will come to you. And you will have a transformed life. Your life will not look the same next year, I guarantee it, if you truly surrender your life over to Christ right now. So allow us bow our heads and let's pray. Father God, I thank you. 
Lord, for this. I thank you for this this time you could be out here, Lord. I pray this message is not laying on deaf ears, Lord. As I prayed coming in, as I'm praying for this entire week, Lord, that you, Lord, would bring restoration, Lord. That you would bring healing to the city, Lord. The city that's so broken. You would turn hearts of stone into hearts of flesh. You would soften hearts right now, Lord. I've been praying for this entire week, Lord, and I believe you've done it. I believe you have softened hearts here, Lord, this morning. Maybe you spark something inside of someone, Lord. I, I'm not the one that, that saves people. You are the one. I've been pleading with you, Lord. I know many have been pleading that you save this community, Lord. And I, Lord, if I pray, if, if there's anyone here today that does not know you, They've never surrendered their life over you. Or maybe they did at one point in their life, but they've been running away from you for years. I pray that today is the day they would turn back to you. They would bow their knee to you as king. You are the king. Whether they want to make you the king or not, Lord, you are the king. I pray right now, Lord, they would bow their knee to you. They confess their sins to you. Lord, as you tell us, you are, you are, if we confess our sins to you, say this in 1 John, you are faithful and just to forgive every one of our sins. As far as the east is from the west, you will wash us clean like there are no more. We are clothed with your righteousness, not our righteousness, your righteousness. And when you look down from heaven, you see something that's perfect and beautiful because of what Christ has done. Lord, I pray you look down on this city, Lord, as someday, Lord, I know this will happen, someday it will. You look down on this city, Lord, and all you will see is righteousness, Lord. But Lord, I pray you do not delay on, on reaching this. Lord, I pray you do not delay on doing this. Pray you do this now. And for us as Christians, I pray we take up this, this, this commission, what you told us to do, to make disciples. That we don't just hide back and just hope people will just change and, and just look at the community and, and look down on them, Lord. But we, we would actually have a love for our community. We'd want to see the community transform instead of turning our nose up at it. You'd want to see people that are so far from you. You'd want to see them come to know you. We'd stop our judgment. And we start to pray, Lord, for the city. <laughs> you love the city. You love us, Lord. And I pray you would do amazing work. In your holy and precious name we pray, Jesus. Amen. We're going to stand, yeah, stand and sing one more song together. Um, but if you do want to know more about Jesus, if you do... Want to surrender your life over to Christ? If you, if you have done that, I pray that you'd come. I ask you to just come talk to me after, or talk to somebody um, in a blue shirt, um, and uh, and learn who the true King is of this world. So let's stand. Let's let's sing. Check, check. Hey, as John was just saying, this last song is all about what Christ did on the cross. If you feel dead right now, Christ is the key to hope, joy, and a new life. Let's sing about that right now. I invite you to stand. Let's sing one more time.